gospelradio.com. We are an iHeart station. I'm your host, Jay. And sitting next to me, you all, we have a special guest in studio. We have Andre Russell, a.k.a. Dreezy Claus, the first black Santa in Chicago. Woo! How you doing? I am well. I am very well. How you doing? You look great, by the way. Thank, Thank you so much. You know, I don't think they're going to say that because I've been talking trash before you came up in here. So, you know, they probably like, yeah, she talked too much. Oh, no, you're you. cool. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed hearing what I heard. It was good. Oh, we may have to have you to stay for the conversations <laughs> for the rest of it. But do me a favor. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you became Dreezy Claus. All right. Well, my name is, yeah, my government name is Andre Russell, but... I go by uh, Dreezy Claus, Chicago's official Black Santa, and I've been official for, I would say for a long time, but as far as being professional, uh, definitely the last, uh, going on four years actually, and I've been Santa Claus roughly for over 10 years, just as charities and stuff like that, and I had my own like, like nonprofit, and I was doing Santa Claus for that, and then other families and churches organizations like hey i heard your black sound you want to come do this you want to come do that so a few years ago i decided let's go professional because i wanted to have a quality product i didn't want to just be a guy in a suit i wanted to have an, uh the families have an experience i enjoyed santa claus i enjoyed the camaraderie with the families i enjoyed everything that was going on and i was like let me just see what a what a happen so we got together with some friends and we re 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 recreated the santa claus image you know made it more cultural, not just a, a guy in a suit and a beard and a fake beard and everything like that. So we decided to just redesign the whole look. And that's where Drizzy Claus came from. So what inspired you to even go into Santa Claus? What inspired Drizzy Claus? Like what inspired that? Uh, Let's just be Santa Claus. What I've always, that? I, that's a, I mean, that's a great question. I've always been about families. I've always been about children and families for as long as I can remember. That's my job, you know, like even now working at a school. So I've been doing this for a really long time. It's part of my life. And even when I was younger, when I was uh, at the church, I even dressed up as Santa Claus for them once, you know, just because that was I was the guy to fit the suit. I'm, a, I'm an overweight guy. So fat guys wear fat, you know, wear, wear, fat. And they wear Santa not suits. Not so <laughs> that was pretty much, but that was pretty much the mentality, you know. And then for one of my jobs, I was Santa Claus for them as well because, of course, I fit the suit. But I just enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the energy. I enjoyed the fun of it, the magic of it. And it just became like part of the thing to do. And to see the smiles on not only the children's faces, but the family's faces. Nothing more more positive than seeing somebody's parents just light up because their kids are happy because they see Santa Claus. And Santa Claus is black. That's the main thing. So, so what is one of the most touching things that a kid or a family has asked you for something that's memorable that you've been asked. Yes. So it was a COVID year, actually. It was COVID year. And, you know, everybody was kind of like um, apprehensive about, you know, Santa Claus coming to the house and everything like that, which was fair enough because it was scary for all of us. But I still wanted to do it. So I didn't have that many in, in-person families, but one person, in, but one family in particular booked me and um, went out there and so we had was outside well, i wasn't in the house so we, we met outside but he gave me a, a, a note and dear santa i won a remote control car so i just happened to have bought two remote control cars during the pandemic and i had one in my car so i was like say less i got you be right back went to the car pulled it out and it was like magic. He got what he asked for. Wasn't exactly the same color, but he got what he asked for. <laughs> right, right. And it, he was a, he was happy. The family was ecstatic. I gave it to him on the spot. And that was just one of those memories that you just have that, I, you know, this is what Santa Claus provided for you. That was one. I can tell you another one that happened last year. I went to their house. Um, and... It was like, you want to play games with my son? I'm like, oh, sure, no problem. So I looked on the couch and it was like a game of like um it was a, a regular board game i'm like oh cool let's play this he said no i got something else he goes to his room pulls out a chessboard <laughs> and i was like 
I'm not the best chess player in the world. And I don't want to get beat by this kid. So how are we going to work this out? <laughs> so, but he did not really know how to play either. He was just learning. So we just sat there and kind of like, not necessarily move the pieces around, but we had fun just the atmosphere just doing that alone. So once again, the memory is that Santa Claus came to my house to play chess. You can't beat that. No, nah, you can't. You can't. You can't. And with that, so being coined the first, official black Santa for Chicago. What is that like? Like, I mean, when you did the tree lighter ceremony for two, was it 2000? Was it last year? Last year, yes. Sir. What was that experience like? And what is it like now, you know, being the official <laughs> black Santa for Chicago? It is still a dream and a, and a blessing at the same time, because when I first became professional and Lord Lightfoot became mayor around the same time, I told myself when I was like talking out loud and manifesting like I want to light the Christmas tree for the mayor. That was my thought and goal at the time. And of course I was so it was so new to me. I didn't really, you know, think about it past that point, but it was just in the back of my head. So when they called so so, so when they emailed me, I really had to look at it twice like is this really happening? Like is this a dream? Like this is this really happening? So everything was such an experience. I mean, of course, I got paid for it and everything like that. And it was, it was, that was great as well. And just the, just the service, you know, the fact that out of 108 years, I'm the first black Santa to light the Christmas tree alone. Even if I never do it again, I was the first. Right. And that, you can't take it from me. That's amazing. So it was amazing just to think about it and do it. And other people saw it. And it, it launched other people to come and check me out as well. And every everything is like a blessing to me because, like I said, I started out real humble thinking, like, oh, I want to do this. But then it just, and it happened. And it was like a dream come true. So do you work, do you have or do you work with any organizations that, you know, provide these services for the kids? And if so, what are the, or um, that accept donations for kids and that takes donations? And if so, how can we donate? How can the viewers and the listeners donate to these organizations? Well, as far as organizations, they're, they're few. I mean, they're they're spread out and they have their own entities for collection and, and everything like that. So I got to get a list. Do you have, together. but do you yes, have a personal you, organization? Um, right now, um, I know I, 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 I'm a board, I'm on a board member for the Healing Academy, which is a, a, a nonprofit artistic based um, organization dealing with social emotional learning and, and, and um, education for, for the for kids and everything like that. So that's one group. Um, then I'm a member of a lodge, of course, St. John Grand Lodge, but uh, Joe's Lodge number 12. And we do collections as well. We, as a matter of fact, we'll be having, uh, we're talking about hosting a uh, an event for adopting families and giving children gifts and things like that as well. And then I just uh, kind of put, not a, a deal together, but it's a, a collaboration together with some uh, people from Chicago Vocational High School, CVS Academy, mm -hmm. and our alumni, has gotten together and they want to uh, work with me to collect toys as well. So those are a few people that, that right now I'm partnering with. But, I mean, if they go to, uh, if they email me or they go to my website, uh, dreesyclaws.com, and they say they want to support, I can point in the right directions for anybody. Okay, because we'll definitely have to make sure we get that information because it is almost that time of year. You know, October is right there, right around the corner. So, you know, listen, as soon as October come, listen, we're preparing for the Christmas season, so we definitely want to be able to help be a blessing to some of these families and just kind of, you know, help put some smiles on some kids' faces. So, now listen, I see Dreezy Claus brought me a gift. These are coloring books, so tell us a little bit about your coloring book, or is, is no, yes. your stories. I have, I, yes, I have, okay, so I have so a storybook and a coloring, on a coloring book. book. Tell us about it and how we can... Uh, get these out into some hands. So uh, when I uh, became professional and I was uh, going to visit families and doing things like that, of course, storytelling is part of the culture of Christmas time, mm -hmm. storytelling. And at the time, I could not find any um, black characters at the time and or anything that wasn't like carbon copy from the uh, white media. I wanted something more cultural and more specific. And I was like, there is no book about black Santa. None out there. So I decided, with the help of a friend named Tanisha Naylor, um, to actually get together and create a book. So that's the first book right there, Dreezy Claus and the Boy Who Didn't Believe. And it's basically just a story about believing in Black Santa 
and what it means to believe in Black Santa and what it means for the families and good little boys and girls of color. So that was the first book. Uh, the second book is basically um, I wanted to do a coloring and activity book. I wanted to do something um, to incorporate, since I work in a school, something to incorporate literacy, something to incorporate math and critical thinking and just a fun thing to do. So that right there is where the coloring and activity book came in. So now how can they pick up the yeah. coloring books and the, and the and Everything the is definitely available on Amazon right now. You can go to Amazon and pick it up. And I'm working on uh, actually uh, creating more avenues for it to come more directly through me. But right now, Amazon is pretty much where they're at. Okay, listen, give, do me a favor. Give everybody your handles on how they can get in contact with you, follow you, email you, book you for appearances. How can they do that? Uh, you can go to, there are a couple of ways. Uh, you can go to www.dreezyclaws.com. That's the first avenue. I also am available um, on Facebook as well. Um, I have a personal page, Dreezy Claus, as well as a business page, Dreezy Claus Chicago's Black Santa. You can contact me on there as well. Um, then you have the email, which is Dreezy Claus at Gmail. Everything is Dreezy Claus on all avenues. Um, I'm working on venturing into TikTok sooner or later for this holiday season, so I'm going to build as well on there. But Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, I'm starting to experiment with as well. If you contact and reach out, Dreezy Claus on Google, I'm going to pop up one way or another. Guys, we have been talking to Dreezy Claus here. Again, we'll have all his handles and his information posted in our comments. Want to thank you guys so much. Listen, Dreezy Claus, listen, book him now. Listen, get it. Look, y'all get a head start now. Oh, yeah. Listen. I got it. Go come, come in. Yeah. So, yes, because of uh, <laughs> the blessings, uh, getting getting me is 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 definitely one of those commodities. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just being for real. Because... And he here with me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm definitely blessed to be with Jay, but I, I am definitely uh, getting, uh, I haven't even promoted myself being um, being open for booking, but people have been contacting me already, and December is already starting to, uh, to, uh, to get locked in, as well as some other times. So I'm actually dedicating some times for uh, like the week before, or the week of Christmas, I believe some, Christmas is like on a Sunday. So the week before, I'm dedicating it to schools and daycares, so in particular. So schools and daycares, definitely hit me up for that as well. Um, and then other events, and I'm working on a big project with uh, a big, uh, like a center workshop type deal. So you come in and, and come to me as opposed to me going to families and things like that, because sooner or later it will be to a point where those home visits will be, you know, few and far. But I also have virtual visits as well. So anybody that's not in Chicago or they can't get to me via other ways, I, I do virtual visits as well. And that's definitely for like mm, about 10, about 10 minute, 15 minute conversation on there as well. And, and I read stories, talk to the kids and have a good time with that. And I have a couple of cute stories about that as well. But yeah, so virtual uh, home visits and private events, I'm down for all of it. Guys, Dreezy Claus, definitely do me a favor. Give your handles one more time. Book them. DreezyClaws at gmail.com. Uh, DreezyClaws.com. Facebook, Dreezy Claws. Um, Instagram, Dreezy Claws. Uh, for now, Twitter, Dreezy Claws. Everything is Dreezy Claws on all handles. But to reach me out, out, out for business, definitely use the website, email, or my uh, Facebook pages. And again, guys, 